The designs for the gorillas have been submitted by local artists, children and community groups from across the region. Businesses were then given the chance to sponsor a gorilla and choose a design, and artists across the country were commissioned to bring the animals to life. Well, this is how they start off. They're fiberglass moulds over steel frames, which makes them very strong, and they all look exactly the same until the artists get involved, and then, well, they can take on almost any form the artist desires. This one, Dragilla, is half gorilla, half dragon. Cleo has spent four days working on her gorilla. It has been a challenge. Um, the beast himself is big enough when you meet him, but then when you start working around him, you realise the surface area of them is absolutely huge, so it's taken a lot longer than I thought it would. Um, they really do feel like animals as you paint them, and, and as you know, I've, I've explained to passers-by, as you put the face, facial features in particularly, that's when they really take on a personality, so yeah, I'm quite attached to it. <laughs> Paint and Zoo, which is behind the project, says the idea is to celebrate their 90th birthday and raise money for river gorillas in Africa. There are several subspecies of gorilla um, throughout Central and West Africa, and some are well known, the mountain gorillas, you can go to Uganda and see them. The cross river gorillas are not so well known and are in big trouble for all the same reasons as gorillas anywhere, that people particularly are encroaching on their habitat, they're turning forest into farmland, and we really need to do something to draw the line and say that we need to save these species. Here in Exeter, the life-size apes are already proving a popular attraction with all age groups. When all 30 are completed, they'll be displayed in streets, parks and open spaces throughout Torbay and Exeter for 10 weeks in the summer. Ali Chitty, BBC Spotlight, Exeter.